So you just started making your first room and you decided to add some studio lights to it. Unfortunately, there's no place to plug it in and there's no switch to turn it on. In Rec Room, you have to make that stuff yourself. It seems pretty hard and at first you didn't understand it. That's where I'm coming in to help you. This video is going to show you how to do that because this is the... Hey everyone, Kirito here with your very first Builder's Guide video. This video is going to cover some of the basics, circuits, and the first build I ever did when starting Rec Room, which was making this light work. It may seem easy to a lot of people, but when I first did it, all I saw was a bunch of tags and a bunch of arrows, and I really had no idea what I was doing. It took some trial and error and asking a bunch of people just to get this light to work. So today, we're going to use the things that you see on this table which is basically going to be all the staples you're going to use later on with circuits. We have a button, a combinator, an output, a variable chip, and our spotlight right here. So let's get into it and I'll start explaining piece by piece as we start putting it together. So to get started, let's start from the left and move our way over to the right. The left is the button we're going to use to turn things on and off. It has three states, the red being when button is pressed, green while button is pressed, and the blue when button is released. These three states, whichever one you use, will give off a one when you're actually in it. Next, we have a combinator. The combinator does exactly what it sounds like. It combines things, values given from devices such as buttons, trigger volumes, or variables or massive equations that you make using these chips but don't worry about that right now all we're trying to do right now is turn on a light next we have an output chip the output chip tells us what it's outputting sounds pretty simple right the output chip tells us what we're outputting it's a good practice to have these because if you plug them into certain areas and something goes wrong instead of trying to figure out in your head where the math was it's going to tell you exactly where the sum is Next, we have a variable chip. A variable chip keeps three values in it, either in red, green, or blue. We're only going to be using two of those in this one. And finally, we have our studio light. Our studio light also seems to have arrows in it. And those arrows tell it on and off, the intensity, or in this case, the color, and the intensity. But we save the one for last. So to begin, we're going to use this variable chip because the color and the intensity are going to be the same. So red to color, green to intensity, and to set the values, we're going to say color is always going to be the same, so you don't really have to deal with that. And the intensity, we'll say 50%. Now, as you can see, nothing's coming out. That's because we haven't turned it on yet. And to turn it on, we need to go back to our button. Now, we know we want it when it's pressed to do something. And if we just had this alone and plugged it in, it would only be a one when it's pressed. And immediately when we let go, it's gonna to return to zero and the light's gonna turn back off. We need to keep that one value, and that's where the combinator comes in. So we're going to attach this to the combinator, first by making sure it's unfrozen. Now the combinator, like the button, doesn't have any memory, it doesn't really know what it's doing. So we kind of cheat by keeping it in our left hand. Think of the green button, or the green tag, as your left hand. So we're going to attach your output to the green input. And this is basically the best way I can explain it. We press the button, the button sends a one. The red output says, okay, I see the one, but if I don't have something to remember it, I'm gonna forget and it's gonna immediately go back to zero. So the green's kind of like its cheat sheet. So it says, okay, I have a one putting it on my cheat sheet. Okay, I got it, go back to zero. So we press the button again. It sends a one. 
I have a one, but how many did I have before? It goes back to the cheat sheet. Oh, I already had a one, so I guess that's a two now. Okay, I'll remember the two. And so on and so forth. And that's how it works. So to make sure this works, we're going to attach the output here to our output chip. And we're going to press the button. Make sure your button is frozen before you press it, because buttons are a little finicky like this. If you try to press it or grab it when it's not, it's going to be picked up because it's an object and then it's going to stick on you. So to make sure it doesn't do that, we're going to freeze. So now, since we have it in here, we have it looped, we have attached the output, this should give us the one we're looking for. Now we have that one, we're going to go back to wire and we're going to attach this to the on and off of our spotlight. And if this works, the light is going to turn on. But it seems it's not working. I wonder why. Well, there could be a few reasons because of that. Since I put in the blue signal and I didn't attach the blue, there's no value coming across. What I actually did was attach it to the green signal. So all we have to do is go in, hit the 50% like we wanted, and your light is on. This is another thing that's very easy to troubleshoot. A lot of people seem to do it because of the way the RGB signals are placed. Usually you would think go down and across, but in this case, it's across and down. Happens to the best of us, still happens to me, and I've been building for months now. So, that's how you turn a light on. Well, that's all for now. You just made your very first light. If you have any questions, leave the questions in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you. Not to mention a lot of fans may be able to help you as well. Well, that's all for now. Kirito, out.